Okay, welcome back. I want to go over a few things that I missed yesterday with the um, with the tack box and some of the things that I promised to show. Um, Patrick's out here with the bigger camera, so that'll be uploaded later on YouTube. And I've got my microphone hooked to him, so I don't know how the audio is going to work for you guys, but I just figured I'd set it up and invite all of you to be here. Okay, so the one thing that I mentioned about the tack box, I said keep doubles of everything in your tack box so you never touch it you never take anything out when you're at home however these are my favorite shears that i use every day so obviously i don't have doubles of those in my tack box so this is this is the only thing that i have to remember before i go to the dog show to pull out of my everyday tack box here and put it in my dog show and what i usually do one or two days before the dog show was I put a great big sign with scotch tape on top of my yellow tack box and I say remember your scissors so I did want to mention that that my very favorite scissors go with me back and forth okay now the other thing was tea scaling I know with the doggy diet I told everybody about the distilled aloe and how great that is just to squirt 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 into their food and it keeps their teeth nice and tartar free um, I do have a DVD that I sell that I sell for at-home dental care, so um, I guess I can put some information on that. Kira is over 12 years old, and if you can see her teeth, Patrick, can you get a close-up of this? I'll show it to you on that side. All right? If you see her teeth, right? She doesn't need to go to the vet and be put under anesthesia and have her teeth cleaned. And I'm telling the distilled aloe is what does this. It's just remarkable. So, and for you guys on this side. Anyway, so, but there's still a little bit here. And Patrick, you can come over here and if you want to get closer, you can. Okay. So I usually do this in the bathtub just because then I'm there and I can, this is just your regular dental tool. You can buy it from Pet Edge. You can buy it from most dog equipment places. And it's really just the same thing your dentist uses on you. And this dog doesn't have any tartar to show you. But you just simply get up there close to the gum line. I just like to tuck it in right under the gum line and then come straight down. Um, I've been using that distilled aloe for about a year and a half on her, on all my dogs. And I've, I, I have never done this in the past year and a half on her. And she's 12 years old. I mean, look at that. There's nothing here. But if you do, just take this tuck under the gum a little bit and then just pull down. Now, a show dog, of course, will let you work in their mouth. It's nice as a puppy when you're working with a show dog to just simply even rub your finger through their mouth. Every time you have them up on the grooming table just to get them used to it, the judges have to see their bite in the show ring. So you want to practice that at home with them just so that they don't think it's weird when you go into the show ring. Okay, and I got a list up here. Dremeling nails. Um, I think that this is so important that I want to go through it again because um, honestly, you should probably dremel nails. I have one, one here and one up at the house. And this is just obviously cordless. It's the 7700 Dremel. You don't want to get the dog toenail Dremel. It's a piece of crap. It doesn't work. So just get your regular Joe Man Tool 7700 Dremel. And they're wireless. And you put this on the charger. Keep this on the charger. Like use it and then put it back on the charger. And it goes in. And if this starts to go bad, you can just order another battery. But honestly, the whole thing costs about as much as a replacement battery. So, and they're very cheap. All right. So, again, to do close-up shots here with the toenails. All right. Now, right. Now, Kira was just done earlier this week. I think on Monday or Tuesday, I did Springer feet. And you can see just in that little bit of a time, I've got white here at the tips. So I like to work on high. I like to get it done fast, in, out. I can do it when she's laying in the chairs across from me here at the grooming shop or up at the house. So. 
You do the sides. You do the top. And then you just tip off the front. Look, she's not even reacting. The sides, the top, and you tip off the front. I do not need to wear peanut butter on the top of my hair. I have pet dogs that come in here that have probably been butchered, if you will, by other pet groomers or even veterinarians, I'm telling you, most vets are the worst for doing toenails. I would never let any vet touch my dog's toenails. Okay, let's do another one here. All right, so you can see even in a week, look, in, in less than a week, how much these nails have grown out. So again, you wanna do the side, the side, and then just pop the front. And then sometimes I do more of the side. By taking this off the side, we all know the shorter you make the nail, that red quick, that blood vein that's in there will actually start to grow backwards. You can take a dog with unusually long toenails and grow the nail backwards just by every day, every week hitting it with a Dremel, right? So again, side, side, top, tip to the front. Side, side, top, side, tip to the front. And you don't have to be as worried about cutting the quick and bleeding your dog's toenails, if you will, with this method. Because um, those guillotine toenail clippers are just are horrid. So just once a week, I keep I I keep a Dremel up at the house. I keep a Dremel down here. I mean, you can barely barely see how I nicked the quick on that one. I kind of knew I was because it was already short from Tuesday. But she doesn't feel it. She doesn't even feel it. So and I don't need to use quick stop or anything on it. So we're all good. Let's see the next thing on my list. Ah, this was very important. When I was doing the tack box <coughs> yesterday, I really seriously wanted to talk about some very important things. Okay, um, if you have anybody that's an eye doctor, all right, they are going to tell you that the worst thing you can put in your eyes are these products, these Visines, and we all use them. The American Springers tend to have this red hull. I don't have a clue why, because the European Springers for the most part, don't have it. But here in the United States, we have this red hall. And um, allergy seasons, just like people. But you go into these dog shows, especially the indoor dog shows, you've got hairspray, you've got uh, chalk, you've got powder, you've got everything just flying in the air, and the dogs are gonna get that red hall. I mean, even the most healthy dogs. Um, everybody uses Visine. I don't necessarily suggest it. All right, so what I use, and what I meant to tell everybody yesterday, and of course now I lost my bottle, where'd it go? Oh, here. All right, this is colloidal silver. It is not to be ingested. It is not to be injected. I don't need a CNN 24 hour news cycle because Debbie was talking about colloidal silver. We're not gonna drink it, we're not gonna turn into the blue man. All right, so what this is, and it's a particular percentage, so you have to be very careful. I get this from a strictly regulated veterinarian that has her own pharmacy. Um, I wanna say it's uh, 40 ppm for this eight ounce. And you keep it in the cabinet, not refrigerated. Just keep it in, in just keep it in the cabinet. Just keep it in the cabinet. And I've had this for over a year. You never want water to touch anything that's inside here. Water is gonna immediately ruin it. So I've had that bottle for over a year. So what I do, and now I can't find my other thing. I have all this stuff laid out and now I can't find, oh, there it is. All right, so we all have these. This is a glass container. It's good old McCormick's spices. So when I was done with this, I washed it and scrubbed it really well, and then I made sure it was absolutely dry. And then I took some colloidal silver out of 
the big bottle from my pantry and I put it in here. And this is just what sits, it sits down. I, I have one down here and I have one up the house. So if for some reason I do contaminate it, not a big deal. I throw this little bit away and I haven't contaminated the whole jar. Um, <coughs> I don't know how much they cost because I buy them and they're good for a year and I usually am at the vet and I'm getting other things. So, and again, I got this from Judith. These are really interesting. And again, we are not going to ingest this into the dog, <coughs> but I'll show you this. It has a special, it has a special metal end, all right, that's actually going to squirt. So that's what that metal end is in this syringe. So there you go. See? Oh, and there you go. You saw it. So I have, again, these. And you can see how clear, you look up to the light, if you can see how absolutely clear that colloidal silver is in however you're using it, that means it's still good. It hasn't gone bad. <coughs> and I, you can do this once a day. I, I have it here. I have it up at the house. Oh, great. And you can see that these metal tips do come off. So... Uh, if they're just sitting on the couch, I just simply go over it. Patrick, can they see it from what you're doing, from the angle that you're doing it? Okay, just like any eye drop in the world, open up their eyes, and it just drops into it. It's just that simple. Okay, so when I'm at the dog show, what I do is I've already emptied one of these out. I've scrubbed it really, really good. I've dried it completely, and I fill these up with colloidal silver. And it does the exact same thing that Visine does for a dog show. And that's, it takes out that red hull. It's not hurting the dog's eye like, the, like, the, like this product does. And also, if you have a dog that, that all day long, you can just almost tell the tenseness in their face. They're just, they're just tense. If you simply take the colloidal silver and put drops in their eyes, suddenly their whole face relaxes. And then their whole, their whole neck and shoulders relax because it's the, the tightening of the neck and shoulders so much that throws off the alignment of the whole dog. So I keep, I keep these in here, my good old Ziploc baggies. And at the house, I have them hanging up. And down here, I just put them away. But there, you're done. So I would strongly recommend talk to a good homeopathic vet about this product. Um, I know that regular vets may not even know about this, but Judith Shoemaker here in Lancaster County, she is a world famous, actually she started out uh, thoroughbred racehorses and they fly her all over the world to be at the birth of these $3 million foals. And after they birth, she actually stays 24 hours and she adjusts them. So um, along with being a regular surgeon and a regular doctor, she started out with horses and everybody who has horses has dogs. So everybody with the stables was griping at her, please, please, please do your work on my dogs. So one or two days a week at her stable, at her clinic, she does, ha she does do dogs and these are where I'm getting these products. Um, Clydal silver is used a lot with horses. So you, it's very easy to see the crossover there, at least in her world. Okay, now I also talked about this product in my tack box yesterday, the black grooming chalk. Um, I understand that you can't buy it anymore. It, um, it was Safari, Safari grooming chalk. I'm sure that they have something similar. Oh God, I've had this in my tack box for probably 10, 15 years. So you can see how little, how little you have to use it. And we talked about springers. The pigment around the eyes and the pigment of their nose should match the color of their coat. Well, with this bitch, you can see she's got perfect pigment. And my other bitch, Troy, is just as dark. So I can't show you how this is going to transform a dog when you do this at the dog show before you go into the ring, but I can at least show you how to use it. So if you have a dog that has pink pigment around the eyes, you just put a little bit of this on your finger. No big deal. All right. I use the colloidal silver first. 
and you can already see how much clearer her eyes are. Right, that red hall is just going away away. If you want to start early in the morning, you can put a few drops starting in the morning of the dog show and then a little bit leading up and you'll have a completely white clear hall the natural way, the homeopathic way. So now we've got the black chalk and all I'm going to do is just simply rub it over that eye. That's all you do. That's all you do. Had she been one of those springers with really pink eye rims, just by doing that, we'll just turn them to the liver color. And then after you get out of the ring, I would suggest you just, you know, you wipe it off because you don't want this nasty stuff to be on their eyes forever. But it's remarkable how well it works because I don't have a dog that I can show you the difference on. Not here. Um, I did want to take a few more minutes and talk about the new vet products and I started on these God, 20 years ago 20 years ago so and I use these myself and I'm not doing it nobody's paying me for this new vet isn't paying me for this ads I'm doing it because it's so important especially with springers if you have a springer that seasonally as the seasons switch and they get the scratchy scratchy icky ickies and yeah I mean they all do it if you have a if you have a dog with with, with dry skin, dry coat, um, the undercoat, especially on a springer, can get very dry, very fluffy, very orange. Nutritionally, the probiotics that are in this product are just incredible. And all you do, it's a chewable tablet. They love it. I, I pull this out and they're all jumping around me. So this is just the new Vet Plus, which is just your everyday, quote unquote, vitamin supplement that you give the dogs. And um, once again, I swear by their new, their new Joint Plus, also the same kind of product, but for the hips, the joints, the elbows, just for that, the old dog crankies when they get arthritis, just to tell you the hip and the joint is the glucosamine, uh, the chondroitin which we all know, and that helps to lubricate the joints and increases mobility. This, th this product here also has MSM, which supplies biological active sulfur to the dog's joints, and vitamin C. We don't need to tell you what vitamin C does. It boosts the immune system. So um, this product is just extraordinary. I'm only talking about this because how much I believe in it. Um, I, I told you earlier in one of my other videos that I had a three-month puppy when I first moved here and she fell off the uh, two-story balcony of my house. She was kind of pushed off by the other dogs running past and I took her to the vet. It wasn't broken. She didn't need to be casted, but maybe she did, but there was a clear crack. Yeah, I guess she had to be casted and uh, she was extraordinary. She was one of the foundation bitches of my line. So. I immediately put her on this product knowing that through her lifetime she was going to have a problem with that hip to the day she died. And I had her, I had her hips re-x-rayed off and on like forever because she'd produced so much of my foundation uh, breeding stock and show dogs at that particular decade of time. That hip joint, even though it was clearly cracked, there was never any arthritis in that hip joint. And I am putting it all to that new joint product. Uh, this is the new vet, which is the daily supplement, and it's got alfalfa, alfalfa amylase, amino acids, beta carotene, blue green algae, brewer's yeast, cat's claw, chicken liver, um, evening primrose oil, folic acid, iron, lemethanine, an essential amino acid that helps to buffer and eliminate heavy metals in the body, magnesium, we all know that that's an essential. Um, oyster shells, we all know how wonderful that is for calcium, a bitch that has puppies, your puppy's growing up, right, um, pine bark, potassium, uh, psyllium, shark, cardal age, that's sourced from a non-endangered species, by the way, if you're worried about it, an effective ingredient that supports health in bones and muscles. Um, oh, and it also helps with a strong immune system. I the, the biggest thing with this product is their skin and their hair and the coat and the immune system. I would say those are the two main reasons why I started using this product. Springers are by birth immune deficient. 
It, they came over that way on the boat in the 1930s and 40s. We are not going to breed that out of the breed. All our foundation stock, whether it's field or show, are going to be immune deficient. This is a breed that's on the top of that list. So the more we can do naturally to enhance and support their immune system, the better. And this is incredible. I love these things. So again, if you do order from this company, you can get on auto ship for 15% off. And please use my order code number of 46177 right that will help that will help me and my family i've got a special ed trust for patrick and um it's just a wonderful wonderful product and the other thing about coats omega fish oils i cannot say enough about salmon oil omega fish oils whatever kind of oil the other thing you can use coconut oil i forgot to mention that in my diet coconut oil you can get a great big thing for 10 bucks from like uh, costco or sam's club coconut oil just a scoop in their food every day it's nasty right out of the jar but the dogs don't care that can be wonderful too for their skin their coat but i still like those omegas because it goes into the cognitive ability of the dog's brain and also enhances and gives them all that nice fat remember every single breed of dog comes from a wolf a wolf in the wild is getting a lot more fatty resources than our dogs eating the grain dry dog foods and even the canned dog foods. They've got to have that natural fat in their diet. Now, one more thing that I had mentioned that was a must have in your tack box. And I, prop I left a bunch of you hanging as to why? why, why, why do we just need sticks? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is for show dogs. I do not recommend this for pets at home or to use every day, all right? But show dogs can get used to this. And again, you're at the dog show. The dog, I, I never feed a show dog in the morning of the dog show. You want them kind of hungry. You want them active. You don't want to let, let it down. They've eaten the night before. They're excited. You've walked them, walked them at the hotel. You've walked them, walked them before you take them into the building and they still haven't pooped. And nightmare of nightmares, they're gonna go in the show, room, show ring, they're gonna have all that act, activity and action, that's what makes a dog poop. That's why I tell people when they're trying to housebreak their puppies, just don't go in the backyard and stand there. Oh, and then when I come back inside to feed them, they're walking around the kitchen and then they poop. Well, it's the dog's back legs and it's the dog's movement that creates the stool, that creates them wanting to go poop. So, there you are. So if you are, if the dog hasn't pooped at the hotel or before you bring it into the dog show, before you put it up on the grooming table to even get started in the morning, take two matches, okay? And this is just gonna work. And again, we're not going to ingest this and we're not going to do an IV with it, okay? Just take it, put a little bit of spit on it, okay? Now, if you wanna come up closer, Patrick, you can. I'll bring the cell phone up. Okay. So here's your anus. And again, a show dog. A show dog should be used to you, you know, working around this. So I'm just going to take this. And we're just going to put it halfway. Halfway. You don't want to stick it the whole way in. Just halfway. That's it. You, she didn't even flinch. Right. Didn't even flinch. Now, what we're going to do... Now we're gonna put her, you would put her on a leash and you would take her out, which I'm gonna do here. Ah! Let's go. Well, had she not already gone poop this morning by matching them and then taking them to the X-Pen or taking them outside, um, the matches work. And it usually makes them go poop, but I'm sure she's already gone poop. So. And quite honestly, nine times out of ten, even if I do this, if they have gone poop in the morning, they'll go poop again. But, of course, not Kira. Okay. So. All right. If they don't go poop and you've waited long enough, it's not a big deal. <laughs> totally unwilling actress here in this part just 
don't forget to take the matches out. All right, so there you go. All right, so let me turn this back around and finish up for today. So those were some of the things that I did want to go through that I didn't talk about yesterday as far as what you need in your tack box and why. How to use the black chalk around the pigment of the eye just to give them the pigment that matches the color of their coat. Using the scaler um, with the teeth, but since I've used the distilled aloe, I haven't had to use it. So that's it for today. If anybody wants to know or hear about something else or wants an idea, please just send me a message. I'll be happy, happy, happy to go through it with you. But that's it for today. And I'll try matching another day so that I can show everybody how well it works. <laughs> okay. And like I always say, yes, the coffee has definitely, definitely worn off at this point, And the wine hasn't quite kicked in. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye for today.